Good morning, everyone. Good morning. It's uh, good to be with you. Good to be with you this morning. Uh, you'll see I've got a new friend with me today. Uh, he's yet to be named. Uh, we've just had a, a toddler live session, which is even more weird than doing these sessions, actually. Um, but this is my new monkey friend. Uh, Bruno's having a rest now. He was working hard at Toddlers Live. Um, and so I've brought my little monkey friend. He's also looking for a name. I've had a few suggestions at Toddlers, um, but if you want to suggest a name too, then that's fine. So uh, do let us know that you're joining us. Uh, I can see one or two people uh, beginning to join us this morning, and uh, it's good to have you with us for our lunchtime session uh, as we get going. Hello again, Catherine. Yep, you've met Catherine, my little monkey friend. I was just telling everyone about our, our toddler live session. Morning, John. Um, and uh, looking for names for our monkey friend. We've got a couple through our toddler live session this morning, uh, but we'd love to have some more. Morning, Precious, and hopefully all the rest of your family too. Maybe your little sisters would like to name my little cuddly monkey friend here. Uh, it'd be good to see them uh, and good to, to get some great names. Good morning, Peter Davis and Carol Davis, hopefully as well. Uh, maybe you've got a name for my little friend. Oh, morning again, Barbara. Good to see you again. I know you were at Toddlers just recently. Uh, it's a bit of a busy morning. Yes, Tamsin, we are naming the monkey. Um, so the monkey does not yet have a name. Uh, Bruno would like to know the name of the monkey. Uh, so the Toddlers this morning, Cheeky. Oh, that's a good name. I'll just jot down some suggestions. Diane suggested Morris this morning for the monkey. So morning, Diane, good to see you. Morning, Debbie and Lily and Heather and the rest. Um, so we've got Morris and Cheeky. Uh, yeah, any other monkey name suggestions would be really helpful this morning. I uh, just thought, you know, I'd give you all something to do. Yeah, morning, Dorothy. My friend doesn't have a name yet, so if you'd like to name him. Our toddlers enjoyed a uh, singing session this morning. Well, I don't know if they enjoyed it or not, actually, because they obviously weren't in the room with me, but I enjoyed it. I enjoyed singing. Um, Ollie and Ella are puzzled. Yes, I know they're expecting Bruno the dog, dog Hazel, but this is the monkey. So maybe if you and Colin have got any suggestions. Oh, coconut. Hmm, I like that one. Yes, Olivia likes to go for kind of food names, doesn't she? I know she suggested that Bruno be called Marmalade, but he's not. He's called Bruno. But yeah, our toddlers enjoyed some singing um, and a story and just a generally weird time. I think my neighbours now think I'm totally crazy. Uh, singing nursery rhymes on my own in here but there you go nothing new so yeah if you've got a name for my monkey friend this morning uh, that'd be great obviously if you also want to because the whole purpose of this session really is that we pray together um, that we just join together uh, to keep our eyes fixed on Jesus so um, feel free to uh, add in some prayer requests oh glad you enjoyed it this morning Diane oh hi again Neetha yep and Le Levy and Inya um, oh, I like the little monkey picture. Thank you. Chunky is Lola's thought. Mm. After ice cream. Well, that's fine. I'm happy to, on my next essential shop, shop, shopping trip, to include ice cream in that. So maybe I'll bear that in mind. Michael. Oh, Valerie's got a suggestion there. Gosh, this is going to be hard to choose a name for you, isn't it? I'll maybe have to ask Bruno. Um, yeah, it's all these things where you've got cuddly toys stuck in a cupboard that you think you don't need, and then suddenly... You find yourself on lockdown and all of these things come out of the cupboard and you find them very useful. So, yeah, we had lots of cuddly toys this morning at Toddlers. Uh, we had a dog and a duck and a monkey and a bunny rabbit. And Bruno was there as well, um, just enjoying singing together and enjoying being together. But I can see that lots of you have joined us this morning. And so we're actually going to move on from, from talking about cuddly toys um, to think about uh, long car journeys. Um, it's hard, isn't it, in these days to think about a long car journey. But I'm sure if we cast our minds back, um, you could think of a long car journey that you've been on um, in the past. You know, can you, th you know, think of any really long journeys that you've been on? I know probably I mean, I've been on several car long car journeys. I've driven them and I've uh, been a passenger. But I think probably the route that for me will stick in my memory for a lifetime. It's a journey that we used to make as children from our family home in the West Midlands to visit my grand grandparents. My mum's parents, my grandparents lived in Ilfracombe in North Devon. And the total journey was about 
200 miles. Now the first 145 miles of that are super easy. You hop on the M5, you drive in a straight line, you make rapid progress, assuming there's no traffic, and quickly you start seeing signposts for your destination. And as children, the excitement just mounted as we felt we were getting there, things were going well, we anticipated arriving soon. It all felt amazing. And then as we got sort of into Devon, you have to turn off the M5 onto the A361 we used to do. And there's about 40 miles of that road. Uh, it's quite a quick road, but you do quite often have to slow down for roundabouts and things. And so you feel like things are beginning to hold you back, especially when the first part of the journey, the straight line, went by so quickly. Oh, but then, oh, the last 15 miles was just deadly. It was a narrow road, sometimes not even room for both cars. So you've got to keep pulling over and letting traffic by. The road isn't straight. It swerves this way and then swerves that way and swerves this way. And you just genuinely feel that you are never going to make it. Even though, in fact, we were very, very near to my grandparents' house by that point. We just thought we're never going to get there. The road is swerving too much. And even though the promise of Nan's super sticky flapjacks awaited us when we arrived, it was just, oh, dreary. The part that felt amazing was the straight road. The road that swerved back and forth took ages. And I want you to keep that picture in mind as we carry on this morning. You see, last time I was leading this session, I started a mini series in Hebrews 10 and 12, some of the Bible lettuces or let us statements. And we thought about Hebrews chapter 10, verse 22, where it says, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart and with the full assurance that faith brings, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water. To sum it up, that was putting Easter into action. But today we're coming to verse 23, which says, let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, for he who promised is faithful. So we've reminded ourselves in verse 22, haven't we, and over Easter, of the great hope that we have in Jesus. The assurance of sin forgiven, the promise of life forever with him. And the writer of Hebrews now says to us, hold on to that hope. Hold on tight. Hold on unswervingly. Don't just say you've got hope. Hold on to it. Put what you say into practice. We're in difficult times at the moment, aren't we? And in fairness, quite apart from the coronavirus, Life often does take difficult turns for us and has tough situations. But you know, it's at those times that we need to put what we say we believe into action. If we profess, as the verse means just to say that we have hope in Jesus, if we say that's our hope, then we need to hold on to that hope. We need to let that hope affect our reactions, affect our lives day by day. You see, if our hope is in Jesus, then we know that actually our time on this earth is pointing us towards a much better future. A time when there will be a new heaven, a new earth, and all the pain and trouble of this world will be gone. And whilst the knowledge of that doesn't take away the things we struggle in, with in this life, including the coronavirus, it does help us to put it into context and to trust that God isn't taken by surprise by what's going on at the moment but that it's part of his bigger plans, his purposes for the world. And God says to us, hold on to that hope. I think it's true for many of us, isn't it, that uh, at the tough times, when things aren't quite going so well, we tend to turn to God more. Somehow, if everything's going fine, we're confident in ourselves. But in this verse, we're encouraged to hold on to the hope we profess. And not just to hold on to it, but remember that swervy carny? We're to hold on unswervingly, without swerving away. The car journey to Devon felt much better on the straight road, much happier, much simpler, much more progress and much more joy. 
And God wants us to have that same feeling as we hold unswervingly to the hope we have in Jesus. He wants us to hold on to the hope, to experience its peace, its joy to the full. He doesn't want us to swerve away, as it were, to doubt God, but he wants us to hold on to the hope we profess and to trust Jesus through the tough times and through the good times too, looking forward to the promise that hope in him brings us. And why can we do this? I mean, why can we hold on to that hope? Well, if you remember last time, we said that the main theme of Hebrews was that Jesus is superior. Jesus is the best, better than Moses, better than the angels, a high priest forever. And so in verse 23, we're reminded that we can hold unswervingly to hope in Jesus because he who promised is faithful. Jesus has made a promise. He will stick to it. Our hope is sure and our hope is certain. We're not holding on to something that might not happen. We're holding on to a hope that is totally secure, that nothing, not even the coronavirus, can stop. God is faithful, and because of Jesus, we can hold on to the hope that we have in him. I wonder what that looks like today for you. I wonder what today you're feeling unsure about or worried about. I guess those things will be different for each one of us. And I would just say to all of us, me included, bring those things to God. They're real, he knows and he cares about them. And as you do that, remind yourself of the hope that you have in Jesus. And remember that he is faithful to all his promises. Let us hold on unswervingly to that hope today and every day. So we're going to just uh, look through some of the comments. Uh, Leeds to Yeovil in the days before the M1. Wow, Catherine. Oh, that's a bit much. Walsall to Newquay, New Ian says, in the days before motorways. Yeah, I mean, the illustration works best with the motorway, but yeah, those are long journeys that people did. Yeah, I'm getting confused with monkey comments as well now. Let's have a look at some of the others. First day at a new school for Paul. Wow. That's a bit strange, Paul, going to a new school today. Uh, but uh, let's pray for you uh, as we come together. Uh, hi to uh, Shirley. I think I saw that Shirley's waving as well and doing things. We've got lots of things to pray for uh, this morning. And just to remember that um, we have our RLBC prayer group for those who are regular attenders at RLBC. So if you want to check into that, uh, if you attend RLBC regularly, uh, then please do and uh, pray for some of the things in there. I'm going to pick up some of those comments uh, this morning, um, some of the comments that were made on the website yesterday after the service, and that uh, we're going to pray together. So let's uh, turn to our God in prayer. Father God, we thank you that the hope that we have in you is sure and certain. And Father, we ask for your help that we would hold on to that without swerving away, uh, without turning away, without doubting you. Father, I want to thank you uh, for so many good things. I thank you for the opportunity to connect with our toddler families this morning on Facebook Live. And Father, we pray that that time would become increasingly meaningful and supportive over the next few weeks. Um, thank you that uh, the technology that we had yesterday enabled people far and wide to join with us. Uh, we're thankful for Aaron for all his ongoing tech work and indeed his parents who joined us from India wanted to give thanks to the children for their prayers and pray that God would use them mightily in the future. Father, we pray for Paul today, who says uh, he's at first day in a new job. It must be very weird to change jobs and to be at home. So we pray for him as he tries to connect with people and uh, to get used to that. Father, we want to particularly lift before you those who have lost uh, loved ones, uh, the several that have come up that we prayed for yesterday. Uh, we pray for a couple that have been mentioned in the prayer group this morning for Pat's stepdaughter's family, for the family of a work colleague of Jermaine, and probably for many others too, as they cope with losing a loved one and as they have to process that and uh, cope with the restrictions around funerals. We want to keep praying for those who work in care homes and for the residents who live there Dorothy was in touch this morning to give thanks that her mum had, had moved to a home nearer her just before lockdown 
and asks us to pray that she'll continue to feel peaceful and secure there, even though the family can't visit her. Father, we pray for those working in social care who have massive caseloads now, dealing with incredibly vulnerable families and, and increased cases of domestic abuse. Father, we pray for families in very difficult situations, uh, particularly since some of the damage now is probably often unseen, but will come out uh, later on. And Father, pray for those who are just trying to reach into those situations. Father, we lift before you our, our families starting homeschooling today, at, again after the Easter break. Um, it's so hard for people who are working at home and trying to school their children and cope with pressures from uh, maybe school and other parents. Father, I just pray for each uh, parent this morning that you would help them just to keep it real and to get that balance right between work, life and everything else, that uh, you would just strengthen them and enable them and give them really good family times together uh, that uh, their children would look back on this time and remember such a happy time with their families. Father, would you help everyone in those situations? Father, we just thank you that uh, we are able to join together in this way. And Father, we want to go on praying uh, for our government and for those who are making important decisions. And Father, we pray that through all of this, you would draw us closer to you. Uh, that we would be those who hold unswervingly to hope in you and that we would express that hope, that joy to those around us. We ask these things in your name. Amen. Just want to thank you again uh, for joining with us this morning. It's uh, been good to have you as part of this time. Do remember, if you're part of the prayer group, uh, to use that to put prayer requests in it. Uh, don't forget to email John and myself any uh, farewell messages for the Finlow family for us to try and include on Sunday. Uh, but thank you again for being with us and uh, we'll be back with you tomorrow lunchtime. Bye.